What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finished Coding. This is part 2 of our Connect 4 series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just Finished Coding Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched part 1 of this series, please watch it before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the video and then come right back. Now if you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched part 1, in which case you should be able to move the coin around and that's pretty cool, but that's really not our Connect 4 game and there's still a lot more to do. In this video, we'll be dealing with something that I call the controller sprite and we'll actually program the code in such a way that the player can actually make a move and then the turn actually switches and then the next player can make a move. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into our code. The first thing I'm going to do is to actually set up a new sprite and I'm going to do that by just going to choose a sprite and clicking paint a new sprite. Since this is our controller sprite, I'm not really going to paint anything. It's just going to remain uh, hidden and it's going to supervise all our uh, actions basically. So I'm going to call this controller. You could really call it anything you want. Some would call it initializer, but since we're doing a lot more than just initializing stuff, I'm going to call it controller. All right, so I'm going to start the controller when the green flag is clicked, just like the other sprites. And when the green flag is clicked, what I'm actually going to do is to erase all the pen effects on the screen. Now I know I don't have any effects yet, but what uh, we'll be doing when the player actually makes the move is that we're gonna stamp the particular coin onto the particular square, uh, onto the particular circle where the move has been made. Okay, and in case you don't know what uh, stamping actually is, it's just basically leaving an imprint of the player in that particular circle. So um, within uh, this uh, add an extension, you can choose the pen uh, extension and you can grab this block which says erase all. Once you're done with that, you actually need to initialize a couple of lists. Okay, so the first list I'm gonna make is going to be called board. The second list I'm gonna make is going to be called board coordinates. And uh, the third list I'm gonna make is going to be called possible column values, okay? And I'll explain what each of these lists actually hold in a second, but uh, make sure you have these three lists first. Now I'm actually gonna hide all these three lists because I don't think uh, we need to show them. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is to make a variable and I'm gonna set it for the sprite only so that it occupies lesser memory. And uh, the variable is going to be called C and that's really just a simple counter. So now here's what these three lists are actually gonna be holding. So the board list is going to uh, be holding uh, what each and every uh, circle actually contains. So it's gonna have 42 possible, uh, I'm sorry, not possible values. It's gonna have 42 values inside of it all the time. And uh, in case a square is empty, it's gonna contain like a vacant or a V symbol. And in case a square has um, a, a player on it, it's gonna have P or Q depending on which player has a hold on that particular square. Now both coordinates is basically doing exactly as it says, and it's gonna be holding uh, all the coordinates of the board. So this particular coordinate is going to be one comma one. This is going to be one comma two. This is going to be one comma three and so on. So uh, initially what I'm gonna do is to delete all of board, delete all of board coordinates, and also delete all of possible column values. So I'm gonna um, just hit the arrow and change those three things. And once you're done with that, I'm gonna set the counter or C to be um, one, okay? And uh, the first list I'm gonna initialize is going to be the board coordinates list. So I'm gonna have uh, two repeat loops, okay? And not just a repeat loop, we're gonna have repeat until loops. Now you could do this with repeat as well, but I just think repeat until is slightly more suited for this particular task. I'm actually gonna initialize another counter called D, and uh, this thing is going to work like a nested loop, and it's actually gonna make sure that all of the board coordinates are um, in the particular list and uh, we don't have to hard code each and every uh, coordinate in. So the uh, auto repeat until loop is going to just contain repeat until C is equals to seven, okay? And uh, the inner repeat until loop is going to contain repeat until D is equals to eight. So uh, just put that D in there and repeat until D is equals to eight. Now we haven't set D anywhere and you actually want to do it within the loop. So make sure you set D to be one inside the outer loop but outside the inner loop. And uh, within this, all you're gonna have is this, okay? So you'll just have add 
and uh, you'll, you'll change this thing to be uh, something else. But you're going to have add thing to both coordinates for now. And uh, here's what you need to uh, change the thing into. So head over to operators and grab this block of code which says join. And then you want to grab another join and put that where, you know, it will say banana for you, I think. And I'm going to zoom out so that uh, the entire thing is visible. And uh, within the first join, you want to put in C. And uh, right after the, in the second join, you want to put in a comma. And within the third join, you want to put in a D. Okay, where's that? Oh yeah, just duplicate that and put it right there. Perfect. So now what this is going to do is to add in all the necessary values. But if we just leave it like this, we're just going to get all the, um, we're just going to have like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 142 times. And that's not what we want. So what we need to do, uh, what we need to do right after that is to uh, first initially set a D to be, uh, I'm sorry, not set D, change D by 1. And then right outside of this inner loop, we'll be set uh, changing C by 1. And this is what is going to ensure that our entire board coordinates list is going to be filled with the right coordinates. And now just to show you what I mean, I'm just going to show you guys this list. And now when I hit um, uh, the green flag, you can see we have this pretty nice list right here. And uh, that would be pretty much all for the board coordinates list. And now we can get into um, setting up our board list. Now setting up a board list is much more simple than setting up a board coordinates list. And uh, all I'm going to do is to grab a repeat number of times from the control section. And I'm, go I'm just going to repeat 42 and I'm just going to have add a V to board uh, the board list. Okay. So just say add thing to board and just say add V to board. And uh, I'm saying add V because uh, initially all the board is going to contain our vacant coordinates. And this is going to ensure that the board has 42 V's inside it. And you can see that when we hit the green flag. Uh, once the board coordinates list is initialized, you can see we have 42 V's on the board. Now we can actually make this a little bit faster and happen parallelly by just uh, grabbing another when green flag is clicked and putting this inside. Now we can see the board list initializes um, much faster and it also does so while the board coordinates list is being initialized. And uh, this would make your program a bit faster. So I'm going to leave it this way and uh, hide these two lists. There we are. So at this point in time, if you actually head over to your red button, you might notice that we didn't really have anything set up when the space key is pressed. And that's what we'll be doing right now. So uh, within events, grab a when space key is pressed. And uh, when the space key is pressed, again, we're going to have this condition checker. So we're going to say if move is yes, and I'm just going to duplicate that so that it saves some time. And in case move is yes, what I'm going to do is to broadcast a message uh, and that message is going to be called try move. Okay. And in case you're wondering why I had this block set up to be uh, uh, if movement equals to yes, it's because uh, once the player actually hits the space bar, it means he's trying out a move. Okay. And uh, in case he uh, presses the space bar while the move is being tried out, that's going to lead to a whole bunch of errors that we really don't want. So make sure you have this if movement equals to yes uh, uh, outside of this broadcast try move because it's pretty important. Now what I'm going to do is to actually have a when I receive message and uh, the message which I'm going to have uh, rec receiving is going to be called move player. Okay. And uh, move player is going to be uh, happening after we do a bunch of things in the controller sprite when we receive try move. Uh, so the eventual goal of the computer, I'm sorry, the controller sprite would be to broadcast the move player message. So when we do receive a uh, move player, First, what we'll do is to check if the turn is equals to P. So if the turn is equals to P, that means that this, uh, that the, it means that the red coin is the one which needs to move. So uh, we'll have that initially. So in case turn is Q, then you guessed it, we'll be moving the green coin instead. So what I'm going to have right now is a glide um, block and you can find that in the motion category. And uh, what we need to do is to glide uh, you can change this glide one second to be something that you want. I'm just going to be setting it to be a uh, 0.4. Uh, but really, this is up to you. This is going to depend on how fast you want the block to actually fall down. And we want to glide to X would be the X position itself, since we don't want the um, uh, button to glide over to some other column. But for the Y position, what we'll do is to grab some operators and you're going to have a couple of minuses. Okay. So the first minus is going to be uh, holding the Y position itself. And uh, the second minus is going to have a multiplication inside it. 
So what we'll have is we have, uh, let me scroll over. All right, so we're gonna have 49 times, uh, 49 times a new variable, which is going to be called the end chord, okay? And the end coordinate is uh, pretty much like the column, the uh, most uh, down uh, column number. So in the starting board position, for example, the column number is going to be six, okay? So we'll be going right at, uh, right to the bottom of the board. And in case there's a coin right here, it's going to make the num end chord, uh, end chord uh, value to be uh, equals to five so that we have the coin moving to the correct position. So just have a 49 times encore and this would ensure eventually, not right now because we haven't set up encore just as yet, but eventually you will have this move to the right position assuming that everything is set up to the correct size. And I think we actually did this in, our, no, we did it correctly, Never mind. All right, so now the next step is to actually head over to our controller sprite and to actually do some movements so that we have this move player actually execute properly. And there's a lot of math here guys, and this is where things get a little more complicated, but just stay tuned and I'll explain everything to the best of my abilities. Now you can click on your controller sprite and you can have the first message actually set up. So head over to events and grab this block of code which says when I receive, and uh, you wanna change that to when I receive try move. So when we do receive try move, we'll be setting the movement variable to be no immediately so that the player can't really move the coin when uh, stuff is actually going on. So when I receive try move, set movement to be no. And where's that movement to be no. And uh, what this is, uh, what this is going to do, like I said, is to make sure the player can't move or press the space bar. And then after this, we'll be having a function, okay? And uh, the function is going to be uh, also called a block in Scratch. So click on make a block and the function is going to be called move, okay? Now you can just click okay. We're not gonna have any parameters. And uh, for define move, we'll have a bunch of steps. But before we actually go into that, we'll just broadcast, um, not really broadcast, we'll just put the function uh, into try move itself. So now we can actually get into defining your function and uh, actually programming what your function does. So your move is going to be comprised of a bunch of steps, which I'll be getting into right now. So what I'm gonna do to simplify things is to just have three more blocks, which are going to be called step one, uh, step two, step three, and uh, I think, yeah, there are just three. So just click okay for step one. Now we can uh, just make a block called step two, uh, then click okay. And now finally you can make a block called step three. And once again, just click okay. And uh, now you have a bunch of defines and it may be a little bit messy now, but uh, trust me, this will make things a lot easier. So now just say uh, step one, step two, and step three within the move um, function. And this is going to ensure that the move function is just comprised of these three functions. All right, so now let's program uh, step one first. The first thing I'm gonna do when we actually define step one is to delete all of this um, possible column values list. And the reason I'm doing this is because right after we actually, you know, finish making a move, this possible values, a uh, possible column values is going to have a bunch of values that may or may not be the values that we want. So the best thing to do is to clear everything and start us, uh, um, start our search afresh. Okay. So delete all of possible column values. And right after that, I'm going to be setting the same counter variable, which is C to be a uh, one, I could uh, really make a new variable, but I just think uh, the lesser variables we have, the better. I mean, the screen's already a bit messed up. So initially I'm gonna set C to one, and now I'm gonna make a new variable. And this is going to be called largest number. And uh, what this variable is going to uh, actually be doing is to check whether, you know, that particular move is um, actually a legal move or not. And how we're gonna do that is a bit simple but you'll understand that a little bit later, okay? So uh, initially what I'm gonna do is to set the largest number variable to be zero, okay? And now I'm gonna have a repeat and you can do that by heading over to events and grabbing this block which says repeat 10 times. And uh, instead of repeating a finite number of times, what I'm gonna do is to repeat the length of board coordinates. And now you may be saying, uh, well, why would we do that? The length of board coordinates is always 42. And you'd be right, but I just think it's better we have this because in case, you know, you type in something wrong or something like that, you might get into some errors. So just have length of board coordinates. And this would um, make sure that uh, things apply even if you have a connect for board of a larger size. So just have this for now. 
So repeat length of both coordinates and here we're gonna have a bunch of ifs, okay? So the first if, and I'm actually gonna um, put those two ifs uh, together first. And uh, right after this, I'm gonna change C by one so that I don't forget to do this. So this is, this counter variable is basically moving like forward, okay? So within the first if, what I'm gonna do is something a bit complicated, but just try to bear with me right now. So we're gonna grab an equals to from operators and we're gonna say if letter three of, and uh, just change that first. So if letter three of, and uh, within uh, your variables, grab this block which says item or one of board, I think, and you can change that to be board coordinates. And you want to say item C of board coordinates. And that's the reason we are using a counter so that, uh, so that we can go through each and every element of the board coordinates list. So we're gonna say if uh, letter three of item C of board coordinates is equals to column number, okay? Then what we're gonna do, and uh, this is, wait, wait a sec. This was supposed to be your outer loop, okay? And I actually made a small mistake, so I'll uh, rectify that right away. So if this is equals to column number, then what I'm gonna do is to now check once again if item C of um, board is equals to V, okay? So these, uh, so the board list and the uh, board coordinate list actually go hand in hand, and uh, the board list is going to contain the coordinates, while the, uh, I'm sorry, the board coordinates list is going to contain the coordinates, while the board list is going to contain what those coordinates actually contain. So, uh, I hope you like understood what I meant there. So now we'll say if board, uh, if item C of board is equals to V and V stands for vacant, uh, just so that uh, you guys know. So if this is the case, then that means that, you know, that particular square is actually vacant in that particular column. And I keep saying square, but what I really mean is the circle, okay? So if this is our example, uh, we would just have, you know, um, uh, go, uh, going into this condition, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six squares, and those are going to be one comma four, um, two comma four, three comma four, and so on. And this letter three actually refers to that um, the third letter of that particular element. Okay, so if I actually show you this board coordinates list, letter three is going to be referring to this one right here and this two right here. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Uh, now what we're going to do right here inside of this is to add that particular element to the possible column values list. So have an and, and you wanna change this to be item C of board coordinates, and you can just say add that to the possible column values list. So now this is going to actually ensure that your possible column uh, values list has all the uh, column, uh, column values that are actually empty in the particular column that the coin is above. And that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.